Okay, let's talk about a decodable text. Now, I know that we've looked at this before in phonics. Uh, let's look at it again. And I'm gonna just read the definition since we've seen this before. It says, decodable text is a type of text often used in beginning reading instruction. Decodable texts are carefully sequenced to progressively incorporate words that are consistent with the letter and, and letters and correspondence of phonemes that have been taught to the new reader. So basically, this is a decodable text that uh, is structured to teach a phonics rule. And as you go to a new book, they teach a new rule. Is that right? Like this, the Bob books, we, we mentioned this before. They start off with the most uh, basic uh, decodable words, CVC words, like mat is a CVC word and sat is a CVC word. And as you read the stories, they, they get progressively harder. Is that right? The sentences get longer. The phonics rules um, add on more detail. So you'll get like uh, blends and then diagraphs and diphthongs. Then you get words that are, are multi-syllable. You'll have open, open um, syllable words and closed syllable words, and it gets progressively harder. So this would be a place to start, like a Bob book, for a student that's at that early alphabetical principle stage, right? So decodable texts are a perfect choice for a student that's at this stage, especially and especially like the early books, because these books here are, are perfect for that beginner reader that's gonna use the, the alphabetical principle to decode these words, right? Okay, now let's think about that. Now that we know that this is the text that you would use for a fully alphabetic student, uh, let's read this case study over, okay? Everyone, I'll give you two minutes on your own, read it, and then we'll discuss it. But read it first. Pause me now. Read it to yourself. Go. It says here uh, from the Science of Teaching Reading 293, Several students in a first grade class have progressed from partial alphabetic phase of word reading development to the full, full alphabetic phase. Okay, great. So they've gone from partial to full. So that's where they are. They are now at the stage where they're doing what? They're using the alphabetical principle to do letter sound correspondence to begin to decode basic words. Which of the following instructional activities would be most appropriate for promoting these students' word recognition, accuracy, and automaticity? Okay, let me read that again. For promoting these students' word recognition and accuracy and word reading, that's what it is, not recognition. Sorry, I'm thinking word recognition. Word reading accuracy and automaticity. So what's gonna help them? So, so they're, they're at fully alphabetic, and we want to get them to the point where they have a word reading accuracy and automaticity. Is that right? So uh, accuracy means they're they're getting a certain percentage of those words correct. Okay. And so we want to increase the amount of words that they're decoding correctly. In automaticity, we want them to be able to uh, recognize more words rapidly without actually decoding them. Just uh, rapidly recognize them without any effort. Okay. So what could we do? Uh, could we, uh, is it um, A, is it uh, D, support students in reading predictable text in a variety of genres? Is that it? What's wrong with that? Well, well, first of all, a predictable text, right? You memorize them. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see uh, a red bird looking at me, right? I'm not reading the text. So that might have been a book that a partial alphabetic student, you know, was, was reading and they might have memorized it. And if you stay with those books that the student memorized, then they never really get to practice the alphabetical principle, right? So they're never really doing decoding and building on that decoding because they're, they're just memorizing the text. So that is out. Got that team? Because we're focused on, you know, fully alphabetic now. How about this one right here? Increase the amount of time the student spends practicing reading irregular high-frequency words. Oh, nice vocab. Let's circle it. Irregular high-frequency words. What's that? 
those are like pop words or popcorn words or, or sight words. That's probably the better one to use, right? You've, you've heard of uh, a sight words before. Words like uh, the, of, some, one, right, what. These are all high frequency words. These are words that a student sees throughout their reading, okay? Uh, but they're all also irregular, meaning you can't use phonics to decode them. Like the word one. Uh, in the word one, there's no W sound. There's no U sound, right? Do you see a W? Do you, do you see, like, is there any W there? One, what? I hear a W and an U uh in one. And you couldn't use phonics to, to get that. You'd have to memorize that word. Or, or the word what, right? The word what. Now, the first part is decodable. The end is decodable. But that vowel sound is neither short. It's not, and we're not saying the A ah and cat, right? It's not what. And it's not wait. Right? It's not long or short, it's irregular. Now, team, um, this is good. Reviewing these sight words will help with automaticity, right? And, and accuracy. This is true. Okay. Um, so this is this is a true statement. You would definitely do this, but it's it has nothing to do with the alphabetical principle. These things, um, Building a student's irregular high frequency sight word vocabulary will improve accuracy, will build up automaticity. Absolutely true. But you know what? It's not going to build on that uh, fully alphabetical phase. There's not going to be any practice with the alphabetical principle. So in that way, it's kind of out because you're not building on, you know, the alphabetical principle here. Um, but definitely, it's a good thing to do to build accuracy and non-automaticity. It's just not going to be the best one for where this student is. How about uh, B? Model the use of contextual, love it, strategies to read unfamiliar words. So it's mentioned in context clues. This is a great word identification strategy. But again, it's, it's not having anything to do with letter sound correspondence. And that's what we want to work on. At the fully alphabetical uh, phase, we want to work on letter sound correspondence and using context clues like um, <clears throat> a context clue is a surrounding word that helps you make sense of an unknown word but um you know contextual context actually that's a context clue contextual clue could also be like a picture right you can look at a picture on the page and be like based on that picture i know it's a bear no so that's not helping with uh um, um the alphabetical principle right how about this one Having the students practice reading simple, close syllable words. Hmm, simple, close syllable words. You mean like CVC words? Because CVC words are closed, right? Uh, a closed syllable is when we have a vowel and a consonant and the vowel is short. There's a lot of words like that, like at, and if we add in a, or uh, sat, or mat, or bat, Right? These are all CVC words. So literally, this is saying, have the student practice reading simple, close syllable words like at, sat, mat, bat in isolation. Okay, so practice it in isolation and then in a decodable text. I know, like Bob, Bob books. You hearing me? A is an awesome answer. I love this one. It's got great vocabulary review. Love it. Um, and uh, and uh, it, it matches. So team, I'm just going to circle this one here. <clears throat> alphabetical, uh, alphabetical phase for word recognition. You're going to remember the using the basic alphabetical principle now. And simple words, close syllable words like CDC words, okay? Like in the Bob books would be where you'd start with that student to develop it. And all, whenever we teach a phonics rule, we always do it in isolation first. So in the Bob books, um, I wonder if I have the picture of it. I think I can find it. If I, if I can find it, that'd be great. Let me find it. Somewhere here, we had this before. Oh, uh, here we go. In the Bob books, they go through the beginning sounds in isolation first. And then the student gets to practice using the alphabetical principle in context. 
So that's exactly how these books are designed. And it's exactly for that student that's at that alphabetical, uh, alphabetical phase, okay? A fully alphabetical phase, okay? This is a great question, team. I love it. I hope you're enjoying, I hope you're getting kind of this, you see the enjoyment that I'm experiencing and I hope you kind of dig it, okay? Because you're going to need it to get through all this stuff, okay? All right, team, let me go uh, back to that question. This one here, the answer is A. It is from, uh, the answer is A and it's from this test here. And it, this test has got lots of juicy explanations to explain why it's A. Okay, so if you want some more, you can go to this uh, test and you can check out why the answer is A uh, and get a lot of good um, um, vocabulary and review of ideas. Okay. All right. Let's go.